as of today, I have made a brave and personal choice to finally quit diabetes. Insulin, a hormone that is absolutely needed for survival, has been available for type 1 diabetics through pharmaceuticals for years. So hooray for me, I won't die. But over the years, families like mine have struggled to keep up with the demanding cost of insulin brands like Humalog. Here's the problem. Back in the 1800s to 1900s, diabetes was still a mystery to most doctors at the time, but they were able to pick up that the pancreas had key involvement in processing energy throughout the body, and observed traits such as high blood sugar, highly diluted urine, diabetic coma, and death from ketosis. Sir Edward Albert Sharpay Schaefer was the first physiologist to suggest that pancreatic islets drove the effects of the pancreas on blood sugar control, and Dr. Frederick G. Banting was the first individual to isolate the secretions from the islet cells and use it to treat diabetes in 1921. However, the process for extraction could be defined as a roller coaster. Banting first tried ligating a dog's pancreas until it broke down and started to produce the extract of islets. This extract would be then given to other dogs without pancreases to gauge its effects on diabetes. However, removing the dog's pancreas was extremely difficult, and 7 out of the 10 dogs used died. But, they finally prepared a dog with a successfully removed pancreas and a dog with tight pancreatic ducts. Three days later, the researchers froze the degenerated pancreas, ground it into a paste and filtered it, before warming it to room temperature and injecting 5 milliliters into the dog with no pancreas. The scientists continued to take blood samples after injecting, and noticed the blood sugar drop from 0.2% to 0.12%. From then on, they were able to treat Leonard Thompson, a 14-year-old boy dying from diabetes in a Toronto hospital. He received an injection of insulin, and within 24 hours, his extremely high blood glucose levels dropped to near normal levels. The medical firm Eli Lilly started its large-scale production of insulin. Insulin from cattle and pigs was the most common way to treat diabetes at the time, until it became apparent that this insulin caused allergic reactions in many patients. The first genetically engineered human insulin was produced in 1978 using E. coli bacteria. Now the process of producing insulin has been made simpler and the price of making insulin has reduced to around $2.28 and $3.42 per vial for the human insulin, which is very cool, except for the fact that most people are paying way more than that amount. According to ModernHealthcare.com, type 1 diabetes costs rose from $12,467 in 2012 to $18,494 in 2016, according to a report released Tuesday by the Healthcare Cost Institute. The group found the increased cost of insulin accounted for 31% of per-person healthcare spending in 2016, as the average annual out-of-pocket spending for insulin jumped from $2,864 to $5,705 in that same time frame. Companies may now be telling its customers that insulin has skyrocketed in pricing because of the research and development it's done, but not much has changed in the years, and a vial of insulin that cost around $10 in the 1990s now costs around $350, and it's affecting real people right now. Some people who cannot afford the ridiculous prices in the United States have tried receiving insulin from Canada, where they have stricter drug pricing rules. There is no cheaper generic brand for insulin either, but the big three. If we were watching Mean Girls, I would label Gretchen as Nova Nordisk, Karen as Sanofi, and Regina as Eli Lilly. So you may be wondering, why hasn't this problem been fixed yet? Basically, pharmaceutical industries are greedy. It comes down to an understanding of elasticity and inelasticity of demand. According to Investopedia, inelasticity and elasticity of demand refer to the degree to which demand responds to a change in another economic factor. If the prices in an elastic good went up or down, it would most likely change your stance on purchasing the item, whereas the price could change on an inelastic one and your stance would not change no matter what. Insulin falls into this category because it is a necessity for diabetics, so pharmaceuticals know they can charge for as much as they want and their customers have to keep paying for the product. These big companies also pay big money for politicians and big organizations to keep their mouths shut about their high prices, and they form bond with physicians to keep their loyalty to their company. Basically, these companies are keeping the lives of its patients in the palm of their hands. The best thing to do to fight these companies with their high prices is to advocate. Organizations like T1 International and Insulin for Life USA allow you to spread awareness about the issue, campaign against these douchey pharmaceuticals, and even help pay for all the costs of a lower income individual with diabetes. Even if the high cost prices of insulin could help fund further research for these companies create faster acting insulin or perhaps a cure, it should not be at the extent of these big corporations rolling in money while a family worries about if they can pay for their insulin for the next week. Insulin should be a given right, and it's our time to live in peace.